Hello, everybody. So glad to see all of you popping into the room, a beautiful crowd of friends and family and new folks who are soon to become friends and family. We're so glad to see you all today. Thank you for being here. Hello to everybody out there on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining us. And hello to all of the crowd in this room, Arlene in California, Susan in Ohio, Anne in New York, Nicola in the UK, Julie, hello in Ontario, glad to have you with us today. And Dennis in British Columbia, Candace in Maryland. Hello, Robin, nice to have you with us today. And hello, Doug in Vermont, Hindi in Toronto, Deborah in Kentucky, Janet in Georgia, plus Janet's cat's tail. Peter Amadon, glad you're with us today. One of our regular song leaders um, coming in from Vermont. Dion in Connecticut, Sue in California, Carolyn in Idaho. Hello, Gay, nice to see you today. And Delhi in Maryland, Storm in Mass, Caroline in Maryland, Kathleen in Albuquerque, and Bonnie in Idaho. Who else do we have? Hello, Susan, nice to have you with us today. And Lucy in Milwaukee, great to see you again. It's been a while, we're glad you're back. George, hello, nice to see you today. And Lynn in Connecticut, Christiana and Bob in Rockville, David in upstate New York. Hello, Susan in Seattle. Sheila, hello in Florida. Karen in Oregon, hello. Barbara, Dean in Massachusetts, hello, nice to have you today. And Aloysius also in Massachusetts. Anna in Maine, hello, glad you're here. And Rosalie in Michigan, hello. Jan, hello, nice to see you today. And Nancy's cow in Washington. And Dan in Virginia. Hello, Jim Harkless, also one of our song leaders in the room to us today. Hello, coming in from DC. Trish in Victoria. Hello, Bob, nice to see you today. And Arden, hello, in Western Mass. Anne, hello, and Gary in Mass, and Rosemary in Maryland. And Sean, glad to have you back with us again. Carol in BC. Lots of new faces today. Welcome to all these new faces. And uh, welcome, of course, to everybody whose place I don't know where you are coming from but um, I hope to learn. Lisa, hello, coming in from Indiana, Nancy in Vermont. Hello, Catherine and Brian and Nancy and Kevin in New Hampshire, Luda in BC without Mark today. Hello, Mabel and Bob in Mass, Anne in Maryland. Hello, Julie and Becky in Vancouver. And hello, Pam and Jenny in Victoria, Martha in Oregon, Tom also Victoria, Fred, Maryland. Hello, Greg, coming in from DC, and Dwayne, nice to see you, Jane, and Beth, and lots of other folks off video. Really glad you guys are all with us today. There is nothing like being in a room with 92 of your closest friends singing a song on your basic average Monday, which is not basic or average because it's President's Day. Deep breath. Hello, everybody. So glad you're here. Welcome to the Daily Antidote of Song. Uh, we are here every day at 12 noon. For those of you who are new to us, we are coming somewhere around our 310th day or so of singing together um, since this pandemic started. And we're so glad you've decided to join us today for another special day. We are in the middle right now of uh, singing for racial justice themed weeks. So the this two week period right now, we have all songs of racial ju justice and we are um, theming our discussion also to the same topic. And uh, we hope you will uh, stick around for the discussion after the song. Uh, a couple of quick notes, the lyrics are in the chat. Um, it's only one sentence that makes it kind of easy. And the uh, donate link, there's Reggie laughing at me already, I haven't even started. The donate link is in the chat. My email is in the chat. Uh, so if you want to email me to either get on our daily antidote email list where we send the lyrics uh, and the song leaders in advance. Um, we also have a snazzy flyer right now uh, that I can send to you. Um, and I also love hearing questions and comments. So please do email. Uh, and I would like to thank today Katie Abadu coming in from Maryland who is running our tech today. Thank you, Katie. And I would like to uh, bring to the center of the stage the laughing fool, oh, I mean, sorry, Reggie Harris. Yeah, 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 come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reggie Harris, who has sung with us since the very first week we started this program. Um, not all 300 days, but uh, many of them. And, uh, and we're so, so glad to have you back, Reg. We've missed you and we're glad you're here. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. And I was just thinking to myself last night, tomorrow I have a day off. I can't believe I have a day off. And then I realized it's President's Day and everybody has a day off. And then I found out this morning, I don't have a day off. <laughs> I missed my first appointment this morning. And <laughs> I got a text from somebody that said, I'm in the Zoom room, where are you? And I was like, oh God. So, hi everyone. <laughs> 
but I figured we would take a nice, uh, easy, uh, easy song. It's call and response for the most part. And this is a song from my childhood that I've kind of reworked a little bit. Um, so yes, the chorus is one line. I ain't going to grieve my Lord no more. And um, so regardless of your faith path, we're just going to sing about grieving uh, God, grieving the universe, uh, grieving the, the light that is, you know, uh, put it in your own context. But there's lots of stuff that's been grieving us over the last year. So uh, we're going to let some of that go today. Um, and the chorus goes like this. I ain't going to grieve my Lord no more. I ain't going to grieve my Lord no more. Ain't going to grieve my Lord no more. I ain't going to grieve my Lord no more. I ain't going to grieve my Lord no more. Ain't going to grieve my Lord no more. Could you get more formulaic than that? I mean, really. So, uh, and so in the verses, We'll start calling a response. So I'll sing, well, you can't get to heaven on roller skates or you roll right by those pearly gates. So it's just call and response back and forth. And then we all sing that together. Well, you can't get to heaven on roller skates cause you roll right by those pearly gates. Oh, ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. You got it. All right. So this is a song that you definitely need to whack on something or use your, just create some percussion. Ha, ah, take a nice deep breath. And we go, well, you can't get to heaven on roller skates. Cause you roll right by those pearly gates. Here we go. Well, you can't get to heaven on roller skates cause you roll right by those pearly gates. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Here we go. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Well, you can't get to heaven in a rocking chair, cause a rocking chair won't get you there. Well, you can't get to heaven in a rocking chair, cause a rocking chair won't get you there. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Sing it out. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. No, you can't get to heaven in a limousine Cause God don't allow no gasoline No, you can't get to heaven in a limousine Cause God don't allow no gasoline Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. No, you can't get to heaven if you stand for hate. Cause God does not discriminate. No, you can't get to heaven if you stand for hate, cause God does not discriminate. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Well, if you get to heaven before I do, just drill a big hole and pull me through. If you get to heaven before I do, just drill a big hole and pull me through. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. 
ain't gonna grieve my lord no more i ain't gonna grieve my lord no more I ain't gonna grieve my lord no more I ain't gonna grieve my lord no more one more time i ain't gonna grieve my lord no more 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 Ain't gonna grieve my lord no more. Big finish. Ain't gonna grieve my lord no more. Woo! <laughs> Reggie Harris. So I think, you know, one of the things we've been talking about in here is how important it is to keep our spirits up, even while we're dealing with tough issues. And so just the notion that we can go from talking about the fact that there's a lot to be grieving about right now to singing about limousines and roller skates <laughs> and laughing while we're singing, right? We know the big picture and then we lighten things a little bit and then we can actually face the big picture, right? And, and I'm so grateful that you brought that to us. Before we switch into talking about racial justice, can you just tell us a little bit about the song? You said you tweaked it a little bit. Um, tell us. Well well, I, you know, sang that song in my, the church where I grew up, we of course had all kinds of youth groups and I seemed to belong to most of them. <laughs> that was my mother's doing. Uh, so, and they were fun. You know, we, we kids would get together and we'd sing songs and we would, you know, learn stuff. Um, so I, I sang that song and then I forgot about it for years. And I was doing a concert actually at a, a summer camp for adults and I was having a song circle and one of the people stood up and sang that song and they brought it all back. But, you know, in the years since then, since I sang it as a child, uh, really, my focus has really changed. Not so much about, you know, uh, the dogma of my church growing up and all of that. But it's about just the things, you know, a, a more political and a more uh, conscious stance on what it is in our lives that grieves us and makes living together so difficult. So I decided to sort of take a couple of verses and have a lot of fun, a little bit of fun with them. Um, and, you know, we have so many things that divide us and, and so many things that we see on a weekly basis, particularly, you know, in the last few years that drag our spirits down. And one of the things that I've always thought about in my performance, and certainly this has been something that uh, really I, I always try to do in my concerts, Early in my career um, as a professional performer, I actually worked for two years, uh, two and a half years in a comedy club. And, uh, and it was a really great experience because, you know, we were playing Jay Leno and, and Michael Keaton and all these amazing comedians that were, you know, really funny and, and you know, becoming famous. And I watched them, uh, he played in that comedy club for four nights a week and watched all of them and watched the way they handled things. And one night, one of them said um, the reason that they were having musicians in was because they needed to sort of get people to cleanse the palate of, of, you know, their ability to take in comedy. So you'd have a comedian, you have another comedian, and then they'd have a music act, and then you have another comedian, another comedian, and a music act. And the one comedian said, you know, the people have a limited capacity to take in things, and there are only so many laughs in a room. And I thought, wow. So as a performer, you have to think about your audience, and you have to think about, you know, how many, you know, heavy songs you're sending their way and how many times you're asking them to sing songs that are complicated and and sometimes you just need to like lighten the load and have a little bit of fun or a lot of fun before you take on the next big issue so i was always i'm always looking for songs. some i've written but you know writing good comedy songs is really hard work um and so sometimes you can find songs and sometimes they're just songs that people use as children's songs um which that would definitely class that can interject a message while at the same time, you know, have a bit of fun with it. That's great, Reggie. I love that. And that notion of the palate cleanser is sort of, if you back that up, you can see like that's really about everything we do in life, right? That too much of a single thing and you start to either get numb or you start to get, so that notion that we do different things to take ourselves on a journey that ends up in a, in a connected whole. Yeah. Um, and so, what we were talking about actually right before we opened the doors was that idea that we've been in this pandemic now for closing in on a year. And it, there is by its nature, 
an awful lot of sameness that we do every day. The days have become all just one day and work and your office have become, your, your office, your living room, it's all become one thing, right? And mm -hmm. whether or not it's a Saturday and you're working, it's all kind of become a single thing. And that notion that we have to find places to come out of that and do something different is I think what's driving so many people to all of the Zoom concerts and all of the new ways that people are finding the book clubs and the things that are like, let's change up the scenery basically. And so I love that you are doing that in here for us, um, bringing us very specifically something laughing and fun um, because you know that in here we're, we're serious sometimes or a lot of times um, and especially now during our racial justice weeks, we've been kind of tending towards more serious discussions. Um, and uh, so on that note, I'm gonna ask you sort of on the serious side of things, how are you feeling? It's been, um, as I just noted when we were in the room just before we opened, um, the three eyes, right? So we went yeah. through insurrection, inauguration, and then impeachment all in a row, bang, bang, bang. And we've all kind of been, you know, shaken up. So. How are you feeling after having just experienced this month of January into February? Well, for me, it's been a real mixed bag of sort of uh, a lot of different projects that I'm sending out. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm have all my videos now that I recorded out at schools and and they're playing the videos and now I'm going on and doing question and answers for, you know, different schools on different days. And I'm still doing concerts and I'm still doing my Deeper Than the Skin program with Greg Greenway. And I have a new video out now with a, a friend, Alistair Mook in, in Boston, uh, race and song in conversation. Um, and so I'm, I have all these things in, I'm working, I'm, I actually, uh, I got the cover photo for my new CD last night from the graphic artist. Um, so I'll be you know, launching that. Um, and then in the midst of all that, I'm watching TV and I'm watching uh, the impeachment hearings last week. I watched very little of it because I realized what um, I, I know now after years and years of doing this, what my tolerance level is. Um, and this kind of started when I had my liver transplant and I was uh, here in the house for months and months and months recuperating. And I used to get up in the morning, I put on TV and I would watch the TV and watch the news for a couple of hours. And then by like 11 o'clock in the morning, I'd be rabbit and writing to the news <laughs> networks. And I thought, this is so stupid to be writing to them. I'm just telling them I'm watching them. That's what they want. Um, so I, in those days, and this is, you know, back in 2008, 2009, I just said, I have to really pay very close attention to what my tolerance level is and stay below it. So last week was a stay below week. Um, I had a lot of stuff that I was doing, a lot of outreach, but for the most part, I, I really, you know, the idea for me is I have to keep myself in a place where I can be light, where I can be positive, where I'm not feeling so disengaged and so numb that I, that my message and, um, and the songs that I want to sing, um, are, are diffused or, or completely canceled by the fact that I feel you know, um, so powerless. I don't want to ever feel powerless. So the ba the way I go about that is to control the input. Um, so right now, I'm feeling um, I'm feeling really positive, and not because I think things are going well. <laughs> I'm feeling positive because I I'm really focusing on seeing all those good things that people are doing, and and I'm, and then I'm trying to accentuate. Uh, sending those messages and, and sharing those things with people. And I'm also feeling positive because um, I, I recently um, received two awards. One I can't talk about yet, <laughs> but one is from the uh, W.B. Du Bois uh, committee uh, in Great Barrington. And um, so um, I mentioned in, in one of my, uh, my outreaches that um, you know, I haven't received a lot of awards over the years. And, you know, sometimes you watch people get awards and you get, you know, recognition for this and that. And, and you know, you feel that envy that, you know, I wish that was me, you know. And I don't feel that way anymore. You know, I, I'm i just grateful that somebody has recognized something I'm doing. But, uh, you know, it's it's just totally not the point to why I do what I do. And I think that has to do with getting older and um, and with this great, amount of appreciation I have for all the people, and I can see so many of you, but for all the people that are in my life that are just 
doing something to push goodness and light and hope forward. And, um, and so I feel like I have worked hard to surround myself with people who are light in the world. And um, I don't have time for the other. We had a, a conversation at dinner last night. I was having dinner with Sonny Oaks um, and, and, uh, and two other friends. And we were just talking about, you know, the connections of people that you surround yourself around. And, um, and I, I was just reflecting to them that there, there have been people in my life who were drains in, in a number of ways. And, and I just allowed them to go away. <laughs> I just didn't put energy into their energy. And, um, and over the course of time, it's not that they don't exist um, or that I send, you know, um, you know, negative energy their way. That's the point. I just try to keep myself away from that. And the songs do that. I was doing a concert on Friday night and I, in the moment of the concert, I just had this revelation as I sang into this little camera of how blessed I am to be able to not only sing songs, but to celebrate them in the moment that I'm singing them. And in that moment, I just became aware that I have lifted to another spot and, and it's a good place to live. And so, you know, I'm trying to live there as much as possible. I know that was the NPR answer to your question. <laughs> no, that was a great answer. And and that idea that like, you know, whether it's people or whether it's the news, staying away from the negativity yeah. um, is super important in a time when we're all struggling potentially with some levels of grief or anxiety or depression or loneliness or so. I think that's beautiful, Reggie. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, so we have a few minutes. Um, I would be happy to take a, a few hands from the chat if... Uh, from the chat, sorry, from, the, <laughs> from one of these boxes on my screen, whichever one it is, um, just wave at me if you would like to ask a question of Reggie. Um, I did see Reggie while I'm looking around. Um, somebody who asked if you could say a little bit more about the award that you just got that you can talk about. Oh, yeah. Well, I was nominated um, actually you know, by Barbara Dean, I think, uh, who's here today um, for uh, an award that the uh, W.E.B. Du Bois Committee in Great Barrington uh, awards. And um, and I thought, oh, that's very nice. And um, and then they are giving me the award. So um, uh, it'll be, take place actually just in a couple of weeks. And, um, you know, celebrating that great man who uh, was, you know, just such a, a powerful force in identifying the issues of race and uh, of class in this nation. Um, and it's for, you know, the work that I've done over the course of years. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm just so honored to, to have, you know, people outside of, you know, my circle recognize the work that I'm, I'm doing. Um, and I, I think the, the biggest thing for me is that, um, you know, we spend so many years, uh, I think, as, as a performer or as a public person, uh, wanting to be recognized. You know, a lot of us start out, I mean, I will admit that I started out because I saw people on TV or went to concerts and I thought, God, I want to be famous. Um, and um, so part of, part of my uh, career started because, you know, I wanted to go out and have thousands of people, you know, yelling and screaming my name or whatever. Um, and over the course of years, you, uh, if you're fortunate, I think, um, that stops being your motivation. And, uh, and again, I'm really blessed to have so many people in my life, particularly the musicians that I work with and that I know who, and, and the civil rights workers and the, the everyday, you know, activists who are so passionate about what they do sort of help clue me to the fact that the work is the most important thing. You know, the the work that you do and your attitude about life is the most. And then, of course, having the liver transplant really also just helped me to reevaluate in my life um, since I almost lost it. And so I'm just in a place where I can I can take these awards as they come. And I've gotten a few more than, you know, than I, I'm saying, but I can take them in the right spirit. Um, that uh, the recognition is wonderful and, you know, getting a pat on the back and people saying you're doing, doing the right thing. But the, the real joy comes from actually doing what you do. Uh, you know, being on with those fifth graders who are asking questions about how they can make a difference in the world. 
and singing for people and having them say, you know, the song that you sang today just lifted my spirits and, and having them talk a little bit about what they're holding. During the service yesterday that I did for uh, a UU Church in Bayshore, Long Island, and, and hearing the concerns and the sorrows of people and realizing at the end of that time that my presence meant something um, or that my song meant something. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's been a very rich life and it continues to be rich. And uh, sometimes I look around and, you know, I, I go, oh my God, you know, I, you know, I have so many deadlines going on. Uh, it's just opportunities, you know, there are opportunities to do good in the world and I'm grateful they're coming my way. That's great, Reggie. Thank you. I know there's a whole room full of people in here who are either already doing a lot of good in the world or certainly looking for some other ways to do good in the world. And that's partially why we're here. I do want to say I see that Barbara Dean has a hand hang just one second. I wanted to say that I see that we have a lot of new folks in the room today. So I want to shout out another greeting to the new folks and just say that my email is in the chat um, and you can also find it on the Revels DC website and that I would love to hear from you, or you can also stay after we close today. If you want to stay and let me know how you found us, uh, say hello, tell me where you're from. Um, we, I'd love a chance to connect with you. I'm really glad you found us. Uh, we love seeing this community growing and seeing more and more people um, connect here. And also for those who are new, uh, a lot of friendships have developed out of this community. There are folks now in the community who are in touch with each other across states and across miles and across oceans um, who don't know each other personally, uh, except for through here. So it's a, a beautiful piece that's come out of this, um, the work that we're doing here. So uh, let's see, I saw Barbara. I'm gonna unmute you, go ahead, Barbara. Whoops, I just unmuted you, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. I'm unmuting you. There you go. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, so as other people have noted, uh, W.B. Du Bois was born in Great Barrington, Massachusetts in 1868. And he has kind of been a persona non grata for recently in his own hometown because he had the temerity to join the Communist Party at age 92 and uh, go off to um, Ghana and things like that. But we have been fighting for many years to get his incredible, incredible legacy recognized as one of the foremost leaders of the civil rights movement. He started the NAACP. Uh, he did way too much for me to even talk about. And so I'm part of the town of Great Barrington's W.B. Du Bois Legacy Committee, and we are tasked with spreading his legacy far and wide. So we did start giving out these awards, legacy awards, in 2019, I think. And the first one to win it was David Levering Lewis, who is Du Bois's premier biographer. So Reggie's in very good company. Um, and so what I, so what I, what I needed to do with the committee was to point out how uh, all these things can be done. All these teachings can be done through music and storytelling uh, in a way that Reggie does. Uh, Cause not all of the committee members are familiar as I am with the folk community, uh, you know, with, with the amazing things that happen there. So I just wanted people to know that some somebody said they went to the Du Bois school in um, I forget where she said, but certainly not in Great Barrington because when we <laughs> built our schools <laughs> when we built our schools over 15 years ago, we worked so hard to get them to name it after Du Bois, and they refused. They refused. So that has just now happened in the last few months. They are renaming our middle school. It is already renamed W. E. B. Du Bois Middle School. And so on uh, February 23rd, which is Du Bois' actual birthday, 153rd birthday, um, Reggie will be receiving the award. There'll be a lot of great things happening that night. And you can uh, see Reggie's speech about receiving the award, which I hope you'll get in soon, Reggie. I don't know if they've received it yet. It's being recorded uh, today. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, good. That's, that's good to hear. Um, and that is go to the mehewi.org. The Mehewi is our beautiful... Uh, vaudeville era theater here in great barrington m-a-h-a-i-w-e dot org and that's how you can get in it's all free it'll be a great program starting at six o'clock with all these different things we have we've just declared du bois day uh, which will be an annual day in great barrington and really we're hoping to make it a federal holiday at some point i think we'll be working towards that next but at six o'clock tuesday night february 23rd 
uh, we'll have a, a wonderful program and it's really well worth going to, totally free. And um, it's gonna be exciting. So thank you for the opportunity to say that. I didn't know whether you were gonna talk about that or not, Reggie, but I'm glad you did. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Reggie. Um, I'm going to look around also for hands and uh, just say out loud that Jim Harkless, there are a lot of chats going in, uh, wishing you well and hoping that you're well. And we always love to hear from you. So if you feel like saying anything, just wave your hand and I'll unmute you. Um, and uh, was that a hand wave? Yes. Okay. I'm unmuting Jim. Go ahead, Jim. You're up. Well, I, I, I'm just going to say I'm still in a rehab facility and uh, I expect in the next few days we're making a decision as to where I go next for uh, assisted living. And uh, I'm so fortunate that I can still sing. <laughs> and uh, Reggie, you are wonderful. And, uh, so are you, Jim. Uh, well, Du Bois, of course, is one of my heroes. Uh, he was a fantastic person. Harvard man like me, <laughs> and uh, he was uh, he was so prescient, uh, and uh, it's wonderful what you, is happening in his hometown now. I'm so happy for that, uh, and I'm just happy to myself to still be fortunate to be around and enjoy this wonderful group of people. Uh, I uh, each time I come in, I see a lot of the same faces, uh, and I've gotten to know many of you myself. I particularly like the children. <laughs> and uh, I think there was at least one today. Yeah, we love the children. I have to say, as the schools are starting to open back up again, we're starting to see less of them in the room, um, which makes me sad. But um, we'll also figure out ways to keep the kids involved, no matter what it is we're doing with the Daily Antidote, because they have been such a beautiful part of it and a blessing to be able to share space with them. And Jim, everybody in this room is sending you huge hugs and uh, huge recovery wishes. And uh, wherever you go into whichever facility you are next, make sure that you tell them they need to have very strong Wi-Fi so you can keep singing with us. <laughs> yes, well, actually. Whoops. The, and uh, next Sunday, I, I may be moved. And I put in a plug for Jubilee Voices. We'll be here uh, next Sunday. They actually That's sing great. a solo. That's great. I love it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. So stay tuned. We'll put links into the emails about um, any of the Jubilee Voices stuff that's coming up. And uh, I'm going to see what time it is. We could probably take one more hand. I'm going to look and see if there's anybody else who has a hand up. Um, wave at me really madly, please, so that I know <laughs> that I'm, <laughs> yeah, like do a dance or something so that I can see you. I'm doing another scroll through. Please wave, 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 wave if you're waving at me. Wave. I see my friend Peter Greg Amadon Lewis. waving. Peter Amadon. All right. Wait, I didn't see Peter. Where is Peter on my screen? There he is. Okay, Peter, go ahead. I uh, just want to say hello. Thank you, uh, Reggie. And I also want to tell you that that was amazing to hear you sing that song because the last person who sang that song, who I heard lead that song, was my dad. We used to lead Sings Around the Fire. He was a wonder once or twice a year singing leader. He was a total natural. And I realized that I got a lot of what I know from watching him, but that was, that was one of his, that was a, 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 a real workhorse for him. That's oh, I love it. <laughs> very, well, very fond memories. Well, we have one more connection then, don't we, Peter? <laughs> Peter has definitely been uh, one of my connections to, uh, to growing as a musician and to the collaboration as, of, of song leading. And um, I'm just so honored to have your friendship. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Peter. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Greg Lewis, did you have a question? I'm unmuting you. Go okay. ahead. Thanks, uh, um, Reggie. I interested in uh, you know. There's always a danger of trying to read too much into words in a song. There's a danger in not reading enough. Um, <laughs> the uh, I'm interested in your the word grieve in uh, as. A, a, many, many contexts. And in this song, you know, you could run you know, immediately. I'm not going to offend my Lord anymore. Susan stepped next to me and said, well, if you put commas around, I'm not going to grieve my Lord no more. Um, and then there's grieving, you know, for, for not doing like, you know, not doing enough to, to do and, and 
And I'm just interested over time how you have dealt with that word. You know, came as a when you were a child. Um, does it matter? Do you do you ever talk with with the kids that that maybe you're singing with about meanings of of, of that and 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 that word? Um, uh, just sort of how that song you know comes out of your soul. That's a great question, and um, you know it's really funny. The um, words words matter, and um, and the intensity of their connection to both our, our beliefs and our actions, I think. Um, that word for me, um, I think growing up, I mean, we sang the song, but I don't think I, as a child, gave it a lot of thought. Although, you know, we were uh, growing up in an evangelical Baptist church. We understood the concept that, you know, God as an entity wa wanted us to be the best we could be and that. Um, actions that were less than, um, actions that hurt others, uh, just broke the heart of. I think that's what I would say, broke the heart of. And um, so I think in that context, I sing it from a place of just saying, uh, our actions create sadness in the world in ways that diminish our ability to be the best that we can be. And um, I always think of in my first year of college, I went to a, a small college in Atlanta, Georgia, and I had this one professor who on this one day um, was you know, doing this lecture and we were all sitting there. And, uh, and then he opened it up for questions and answers. And one of my fellow students asked a question. It was about personal responsibility and accountability. And they asked a question that just showed that he, he showed he, had gained nothing from 25 minutes of lecturing and and we all kind of looked at him like how could you possibly answer a question and we looked at the professor to see you know what he might say and answer <laughs> and it was one of those moments the professor looked at him and paused and looked around the room and then he said ignorance grieves me class dismissed Wow. <laughs> and I think I pretty much sing the song from that place. <laughs> wow. That's tremendous. That's really amazing. So one of the things that we've been learning in this room is that sometimes people are going to say things around us that we have learned now aren't the best way to say things or aren't, uh, sh aren't showing the kind of awareness that's necessary. And then how do we respond? And in fact, we've talked in this room about the fact that that's one of our toughest roles right now is, you know, in other, other parts of our life, we learned to kind of just like wince a little bit and look the other way. And, but now we understand part of the anti-racist training is to say directly why that is not okay or why there might be other ways that one needs to open up their minds. And, and uh, that's one of the things that's been so great, Reggie, about having you in here teaching us and growing with us and taking us on a journey. Thank you for being a part of that. Um, we love your presence in this room. Um, and uh, everybody, please, a big thank you for Reggie. Um, but Reggie, not only do we love your presence in this room, what we also super really love is your singing. So how would you feel about just singing us out with one of those verses again? Well, we'll do the last one. Oh, the next to the last one. Hmm. No, you can't get to heaven. If you stand for hate, cause God does not discriminate. Oh, you can't get to heaven if you stand for hate, cause God does not discriminate. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. I ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Ain't gonna grieve my Lord no more. Reggie, thank you so much. Thank oh, you. thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank you. So, so great. And the, just to sort of like a, a last word, right? Like it doesn't matter what faith you follow, the notion that hate isn't a part of really any way of living. It seems so basic, right? And there it is in a song that kids can understand and that grownups can reflect on, right? So waving everybody out of the room today. Thanks again to Reggie. Thanks again to everybody for bringing up such great questions. 
Um, I am going to say goodbye to the folks on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you'll be able to be with us again tomorrow.